I'd like to talk about the trail. Um, the Copper Basin 300 calls itself, and I quote, the toughest 300 miles in Alaska. Is that true? I would think so. Uh, everybody I talk to probably would say the same thing. Just because, like earlier I mentioned that uh, uh, you see every type of circumstance that's going to hit you, will hit you in in this particular race. Or we had, it seemed like we had a foot of snow per hour on Copper Basin. This was three years ago maybe. That's just one instance. The river crossings, you get to go through open water uh, normally every year. <coughs> uh, the, the, the temperatures, uh, like I say last year was 42 when we started and got colder here and there. Uh, so you get to see the temperatures, you get to go over uh, large mountains uh, that go vertical, it seems like at the time anyway, um, even above tree line. Um, there's not much, I can't think of anything that would happen out of Did Rod that's not going to happen in this race. Maybe you could just uh, t take us around the trail, and I, I know it's 300 miles is a, a lot, but if the race starts this year in, Gl in Glen Allen <clears throat> and goes to Tulsana. What's that part of the trail like? Uh, from actually this year, it will normally, on the rest of the years that we've ran the race, uh, it's normally downhill going into the finish line at Glen Allen. However, it'll be just the opposite. Glen Allen will gradually increase <coughs> going uphill uh, the whole time with some roly poly hills all the way to Wolverine. Uh, we'll get, to, well, first of all, we'll get to Tulsana which is on a lake, uh, but there's still a little roly-poly hills gradually climbing the whole way um, until we get to uh, Wolverine, which is on another lake. Uh, but the whole time we just basically climb just a little bit, just a little bit. Uh, then from Wolverine it goes, um, uh, I'm gonna, around 50 miles at 48 or what, to Sardo. Mm -hmm. uh, that part, the first half of that is the hills are a little bit larger, not not too much. I'm saying 200 foot high hills, uh, maybe not that high, maybe 100 foot. Uh, but it just goes like this until we get to uh, crosswinds. There's a lake there. After that, it's primarily I would say flattish, but it is still decreasing in elevation all the way down to Sourdough where we hit the river, which would be down low. <clears throat> uh, and then from Sardo, it's actually fairly hilly most of the way, all the way to Myers Lake. Uh, so that'll be in interesting in, in taking it backwards, because it seems like we're always going straight up, straight down, up, straight down. We have glaciers that we kind of have to go over, going side hills. <coughs> Uh, to Myers Lake, which usually takes, uh, it probably takes us three hours to get to Myers Lake. All right, from Myers Lake to Paxson, it's basically right on uh, the lake. So it's fairly easy and it uh, <clears throat> and it's fairly flat because it's on the lake. Uh, and that'll get you to Paxson. From Paxson, we go due east, and that's where we hit the, the large hills. Uh, large hills above tree line. <clears throat> That uh, that'll be interesting too. Going up the back side now, it's going to be the front side, but it used to be the back side because uh, I remember falling. It seems like for for 30 minutes, you know, straight down, uh, going pretty fast. And it'll be interesting climbing that here this year, getting way above tree line, and then then you start going down the other other side, and it'll probably take us 30 minutes or 40 to get down to the other side. <clears throat> and then we have a creek crossing. Uh, probably 20 miles after we hit the top of that uh, mountain. Uh, and then after that, then it's just some roly-poly hills. Nothing spectacular uh, all the way in to Chistochina. Um, after Chistochina, then we're headed towards Glen Allen again. And this is all uphill, gradually uphill, but steadily uphill. Uh, so normally in the past we would be going the other way and it would be easy because we'd have our foot on the drag the whole time because it's downhill and it's the first start of the race. So this year is going to be a challenge in that if a person decides to go from Chistochina all the way to the finish line, which is Tulsana now, which is 70 something or 80 miles, uh, it's going to be really hard on the dogs being it's 
the last stretch of the race and everybody's pushing to finish and it's uphill. Uh, so that it's but no no big huge hills but it's just gradually it's uphill. Grind. It's going to be a real grind this year versus uh, the normal finish when we, we are gradually going downhill for the last 50 miles. It's going to be gradually uphill for 77, 80 miles, whatever it is. And then after Glen Allen, it goes to the finish at? Tulsana. At Tulsana. So uh, it'll be, it'll be kind of interesting. E but even though this year we won't have as long runs at the end, if we decide to go from Chisto all the way to, uh, uh, to Tulsana, it's only going to be 70 or 80 miles versus uh, going the other way like we used to from Sardo all the way to Glen Allen, which was 110. So in that respect, it'll be uh, fewer miles at the end, so uh, that's good. Yeah. And what are the mandatory rests in this race? <clears throat> mandatory rests are, uh, this year they have 18 hours of mandatory rest. One being an eight hour rest where you can take anywhere you prefer. The rest you can uh, you can split it up and do it at any one of the, the checkpoints. 